Okay, here we are continuing our discussion of ARC section 80 as it relates to the compilation of financial statements. And in the last video, we discussed the general requirements um, and inclusions in the accountant's compilation report. And uh, now we're going to discuss um, the compilation report whenever the financial statements are prepared in accordance with the special purpose framework. So the last video in the general uh, compilation report requirements, um, it assumed that the financial statements were prepared in accordance with GAAP, which is a general purpose framework. And so now, um, we are going to discuss when we use a special purpose framework, for instance, uh, cash basis, tax basis, regulatory basis, something like that that's used for a special purpose and a special user, as opposed to a general user who would, um, in, in that case, we would use GAAP. So we remember from our client and acceptance procedures and our agreement on engagement terms that we discussed in a, a prior video that the management has to acknowledge their responsibility for including in the financial statements a discussion of the special purpose framework and how it differs from GAAP. And so now, um, we are going to discuss our compilation report in relation to that requirement of them. And this is an ARC section 80.18 through 21. And so it says first that unless the entity elects to omit substantially all disclosures, then we should modify the compilation report when that accountant becomes aware that the financial statements don't include a description of the financial uh, special purpose framework, a summary of significant accounting policies, an adequate description about how the special purpose framework differs from GAAP, and informative disclosures similar to those required by GAAP when the financial statements contain items that are the same as or similar to those in financial statements prepared in accordance with GAAP. So the entity is not required to um, include all the footnotes and such in the financial statements, but if they don't, then we uh, have to disclose that in our report, and that's, that's in a subsequent video. But if it turns out that they do include all of their footnotes, then those footnotes need to contain these items if they're using a special purpose framework. So in summary, in, somewhere in the footnotes, they need to uh, describe the special purpose framework, the accounting policies that are used in the special purpose framework, um, the differences between that special purpose framework and GAAP. And uh, for instances where accounts are recorded similarly to GAAP, then we need to prepare the same disclosures as would have been included in the GAAP financial statements. And in the case that uh, financial statements are prepared in accordance with a contractual basis accounting, then we should modify the compilation report if the financial statements don't adequately describe uh, the interpretations of the contract on which the financial statements are based. So if they didn't include any of these items in their footnotes, then we have to modify our compilation report to say that these items weren't included. But if uh, the client omits all of its disclosures, so it doesn't include uh, footnotes, then there's no way for them to include any of these. And so that's okay. We just say in our report that they submitted, omitted substantially all their disclosures and, and that are required by GAP. And next we have a few more requirements that our compilation report on the financial statements should include if um, the financial statements are prepared in accordance with a special purpose framework. And that is that our compilation report should make reference to management's responsibility for determining that the applicable financial reporting framework is acceptable. And it should also describe the purpose for which the financial statements are prepared, or it should at least refer to the note in the financial statements where they, they discuss that when they're being prepared for a regulatory or contractual basis of accounting. And finally, the accountant's compilation report on financial statements prepared in accordance with the special purpose framework should include a separate paragraph that includes these, these items. And uh, it would say that the financial statements are prepared in accordance with a special purpose framework. And it would refer to the note and the footnotes where um, the special purpose framework is described. And it should also make note that special purpose framework is the basis of accounting other than GAAP. So in summary, if, if the client is using a special purpose framework, we have a lot of specific requirements of um, both the client to include in the footnotes of their financial statements and for us to include in our compilation report. Okay, now we're down in the explanatory material for uh, the accountant's compilation report when we the financial statements are prepared in accordance with a special purpose framework, and that's at A28 through A31. So we remember um, in the financial statements, the, the management is supposed to include um, a description of the special purpose framework. And so this here tells us that that description can be included in the financial statement titles, uh, in the notes of the financial statements, or otherwise on the face of the financial statements. And so they note that uh, financial statement titles, such as balance sheet, statement of financial position, statement of income, etc., are commonly associated with GAAP. And so we, they would need to, um, in the titles of their financial statements, uh, modify them to make it clear that a special purpose framework was used in preparing that, that financial statement and that it wasn't prepared in accordance with GAAP. So they give a couple of examples of how they might modify the title of their financial statements. And so, for instance, an uh, income statement, if it's prepared on a modified cash basis, might be titled income statement modified cash basis or it might be a statement of cash receipts and disbursements. And also tax basis balance sheet might be this um, or this. And uh, tax basis statement of operations and might be uh, income statement tax basis might be statement of operations tax basis or statement of revenue and expenses tax basis. So it gives a lot of uh, 
flexibility to different names to use, but uh, the overarching commonality is that we make sure that it's known that this special purpose framework was used in the preparation of that financial statement. And also the regulatory basis of accounting might be used for a statement of income. And so they note here that uh, if they omit substantially all disclosures, then they aren't necessarily required to include a description of the special purpose framework, or rather a summary of the significant accounting policies or a description of how the special purpose special purpose framework differs from GAAP, because if there's no um, footnotes and disclosures, then there's no way for them uh, to do that. But um, that's with the requirement that they weren't intending to mislead us or the users of the financial statements by omitting those disclosures. And next, we remember that we're, uh, or the client is supposed to include in their uh, footnotes the description of the differences between GAAP and the special purpose framework. But this uh, section here helps us understand that we only need, they only need to include the differences of material differences. And so that, that would be, that's really helpful because there could be many, many small differences and that would consume the entire, uh, a lot of pages of the, the footnote section. But if we, if they hone in the uh, major material differences, then uh, that would be more useful and efficient for the users of the financial statement. For example, depreciation might be a common uh, difference between GAAP and a special purpose, special purpose framework. Under a tax basis, the depreciation is probably accelerated. And uh, under maybe a regulatory basis or a modified cash basis, there may be no depreciation at all. So that's probably a common one. But the client need not disclose um, tiny uh, differences between GAAP and special purpose framework. And finally, it reminds us that if there are uh, financial statement items that are the same as or similar to those in financial statements that are prepared in accordance with GAAP, uh, the client needs to make sure that uh, the financial statements include disclosures similar to those that are required by GAAP. So even though the financial statements were prepared in accordance with a special purpose framework, if there's items in the financial statements that are similar to GAAP, then we need to make sure, or the client needs to make sure that they have disclosures um, that are commonly used in GAAP financial statements to explain those particular items. And then finally here at 832, it says when the financial statements are prepared in accordance with a regulatory or contractual basis of accounting, we are required to include in our compilation report uh, reference to the note where the um, that special purpose framework is described. And that way the users of the financial statements will maybe see um, that reference in the compilation report and go to the note to make sure that there's no misunderstandings about the uh, purpose of the financial statements.